Hey Defenders, welcome back. In this video, I want to show you guys how we can deploy our full seam stack within seconds using Docker. So if you guys have been following along with the channel for a while, you should hopefully remember one of our videos where we covered all of the applications and services that are required to run for our full seam stack. And if, if you haven't, I'll link down to that description below. So please make sure to check that out. Uh, prior to progressing on with this video, but you should you guys should know the core components of our seam stack are is our Wazoo manager so we can use this guy to receive logs from our endpoints Elasticsearch we need somewhere for Wazoo to actually write its logs and alerts to and that is where Elasticsearch comes into play This guy serves as our storage backend for all of our Wazoo alerts and then we have Kibana which is our web UI that we can use to interact with our elastic stack uh, view all of our wazoo alerts build dashboards and provides us the user interface into all of our alerts and these three components we have deployed on individual vms where now using docker we can actually just deploy one vm and deploy all of these apps within separate containers on that vm so you can almost kind of think of it as a vm within a vm uh, I'm not going to get too, too deep into all of the different possibilities and configurations you can do with Docker. It allows us to essentially spin up our full seam stack within seconds rather than having to deploy all these individually. We can really simplify our seam stack deployment so we can get really some of the the key benefits of docker is we can get up and running within minutes we can easily scale up and down as demand either increases or decreases say for example we're starting to ingest a lot more logs so we need to add another elastic search node to the cluster we'll be able to do that very easily and that'll hopefully become obvious a little later in this video we'll be able to simplify upgrades so when we want to upgrade Upgrade Elasticsearch or Wazoo Manager or Kibana even, we will be able to simplify upgrades very quickly using Docker and we can also rely on Docker to provide us redundancy. So if, say, for example, an Elasticsearch node goes down, Docker realizes, hey, that the Elasticsearch service is down, so I'm going to try to spin it up again automatically. So that will give us a little bit of redundancy. And you can get even more advanced with uh, Docker Swarm and provide some more high availability uh, in that manner. And that's a topic for a later video. So some steps in this video. We are going to first install Docker. We will then and install docker compose we will make a few vm tweaks so that elasticsearch can properly function we are then going to generate our ssl certs so that we will secure communications between elasticsearch kibana and encrypt the data that's being passed between the two we will then create our own internal users and then we will finally deploy the stack and I do want to mention this video is sponsored by Sock Fortress. We are actually going to follow their blog uh, as well, which I will link in the description, but they have a blog detailing these steps. So we are going to follow along with that as we deploy this ourselves. So let's go ahead and jump into it. And all right, so here I have my VM on the right. Let me kind of make this a little bigger. Yes, uh, this is the I, I am going to be I am going to be deploying this all on one VM. So this is a little beefier of a VM. You see, I have four core CPUs and uh, roughly eight gigs of memory available to this guy because I will be running three Elasticsearch containers, which we'll see a little bit more of here in a sec. So uh, I do need a little beefier of a box to be able to to handle that. So let's start to scroll down and let's start to go through their steps here. So first we need to install docker and docker there is actually an install script that we can use to deploy this on a linux machine this is a uh, ubuntu uh 20.0.4 i believe yep so i'm deploying this on an ubuntu box but the script should also work for a a centos 7 aws linux and other linux distros if you want to manually perform the installation uh you can go to you can follow the link here within the blog post to find the installation steps for your particular operating system uh there so but we have been provided this friendly script that we can just copy paste and now this will install docker for us 
And all right, so we got Docker installed. Let's go ahead and start it. And let me clear. And I'll just do a status just to make sure we are up and running. And okay, that looks good. So Docker is now installed and is running. I'll go ahead and enable Docker. So Docker will start at boot time. And all right, now it is time for us to install Docker Compose. And what Docker Compose allows us to do is to run multi-container Docker applications within the same environment, right? So for example, Wazoo, Elasticsearch, and Kibana, these, these applications need to be able to talk to one another, right? Wazoo has to be able to forward its logs to Elasticsearch. Kibana needs to be able to query Elasticsearch to load all of the data within our web UI. So these, all of these applications here need to talk to one another to make sure our full seam stack can correctly function. And Docker Compose allows us to deploy these, these applications within their own containers, but these containers will be within the same environment and will be able to talk to one another so that when Wazoo says, hey, I need to log this alert within Elasticsearch, it will be able to communicate with that container running Elasticsearch and actually log its alerts there. That is what Docker Compose looks to, looks to solve. And we'll be also able to deploy, we'll be able to create our, our compose file and then deploy our full stack with one command rather than bringing up the containers all one at a time. Now that we have Docker, let's now go ahead and configure Docker compose. So we'll go ahead and run these commands here where we will grab the binary. We'll then change it to an executable and we'll sim link it. And now if we just run a Docker compose SS version, we should get our version back and we know that Docker compose is installed and ready to go. So that's looking good. And now let's get the VM ready for Elasticsearch to function properly. Let's go ahead and change our memory that's allocated to the containers. So I will go ahead and copy this command and paste it there. And then to set this value permanently, I can copy this value, open up our sysctl.conf file, and I can just scroll down to the bottom and paste that value there. So this, uh, this setting will now be persistent across reboots. And now it's time for us to clone the repo. So was the Wazoo team provides a Docker repo with all of our settings and images and some of the, the scripts that we'll use to generate our certs uh, for us, which is really nice. So what we'll need to do is just go ahead and copy this repo. So I'm actually going to CD into my op directory. You could you don't necessarily have to do that. You can throw this into any directory, but now we have our new directory created for us called wazoo docker so let's go ahead and navigate into this guy and let's see all the files that we have available to us for this video they have a few other uh, docker compose files that you can follow if you're wanting to do like a demo environment or you want to use the basic license of elasticsearch and not the open distro version of elasticsearch you can follow the expat compose but for this tutorial, I'm going to follow the production cluster at YAML file. So let's go ahead and actually open this guy up and look at some of the, the contents of this. So here you see our various services. And I'm not going to go into the syntax and some of the meanings of the various options within the Docker Compose file. Uh, there are a ton of resources online. Uh, that I recommend you at least getting a little familiar with so that this isn't totally a foreign language to you. But I'm not going to be doing a, a deep dive into, into Docker Compose in this, in this example. Uh, but there are a ton of resources out there that you can take advantage of. Uh, but here we have our various services. So we have our Wazoo Master that we're going to spin up. We have a Wazoo Worker that we're going to spin up. We have three versions of Elasticsearch. So you could think of this as being three Elasticsearch nodes. So without Docker, you would spin up one VM 
running Elasticsearch 1, another VM running Elasticsearch 2, and another VM running Elasticsearch 3 to give you a three node cluster. Where here, what Docker is going to do is spin up three separate containers, each running their own Elasticsearch instance, instance that we will then cluster together. So here's the service for Elasticsearch 2, and then here's the last service for Elasticsearch 3. So this will give us what would equate to be a three node Elasticsearch cluster. And then we scroll down, we then see our Kibana container that we will spin up, and then we will use Nginx to just serve as a reverse proxy to our Kibana container. So Kibana is going to be listening on port 56 one and from our browser we will connect to nginx on 443 and then nginx will forward us to the kibana web app but that'll be handled for us automatically which is the beauty of docker <laughs> so let's go ahead and now let's actually because i want to be running a production cluster let's set up our ssl cert so that our traffic is encrypted so let's first create our certs that Elasticsearch will use when communicating with other with the other Elasticsearch nodes to encrypt the traffic going between them all. Uh, so this this command here will generate a self-signed uh, cert. But if you want to configure your own certs, you can go into production cluster. Uh, SSL certs and then the certs.yaml and here you could specify your own certificate options if you want or you could provide your own uh, root CA and intermediate CA to sign the certs as well but for for this video I'm just gonna leave it at the default so we'll go ahead and run this command here and this will so Docker is now downloading this open distro search generator, which has the, the code you could think of to generate our certs for us. So here we see we created four node certificates and created one client certificate. So that looks good. Now let's go ahead and generate our cert for Kibana. So I'm just gonna copy this command here and paste that there. Uh, one thing to note, you do need to be in the same directory that your production cluster directory is in so just make sure you're setting your path uh, correctly there and all right so now we've generated our new private key and let's do the same for nginx and again you could uh, add your own certs if you would like as well so you don't have to rely you could get a cert signed by let's encrypt or if you're using a trusted certificate provider like godaddy or someone like that you can always use your own certs uh, as well all right so we have our encryption so we have our certs set up and ready to go now let's actually customize our internal users so if we go back into our production cluster elastic open distro and let's open this internal users.yaml file here you'll see the hash of the password for our admin user so we're actually going to use this this toolkit here to change the admin password and then this tool will also generate the hash for us so that we can replace this current hash value in our internal users.yaml file with the hash value of the password of our choice so i'm going to go ahead and exit out of that and let's go ahead and paste that command here and all right so now it is asking us for a password and i'm just going to enter in please subscribe it'll now generate the hash value of the password, please subscribe. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this value here and replace our admin hash that was pre-generated with the hash of our please subscribe password. So we go ahead and save that. And now we need to update the elastic password within the compose file for the wazoo manager and the kibana service 
to match the password that we just implemented and created a hash for, which was the please subscribe. So for every environment variable of elastic underscore password, I'm going to change that to be instead of secret password, which is the default to the please subscribe password that we just uh, created the hash for. So my last one here will be under the Kibana service. So paste that there. Now we are ready to spin up our full stack and you know, rather than doing bringing all the last, rather than doing a system CTL, start Elasticsearch, start Kibana, start Wazoo, we can now just run this one command that invoking Docker compose again, now taking these settings within our production cluster.yaml file. So that's our Docker compose file that we're using. And then we are going to bring up the stack and we are going to run it in the background with this dash D flag. So if I go ahead and copy and paste this command, we are now creating volumes. So Docker, so while this is building, let's kind of go through what, what happened here. So Docker is creating volumes so that our data will be persistent across restarts of our Docker container. So if we didn't have these volumes, for example, if when these containers stopped and started again, all of the previous data would be lost. So any of our alerts, uh, any of our users that we've created, all that will be lost if you don't create these volumes to persist the data across restarts. So, so Docker will write to the local file system that the VM has allocated towards it to persist the data for the, for the various apps here. And all right, so it looks like all of our containers have been deployed and we can run a quick Docker PS. And let me actually make this a little cleaner. If we run a Docker PS, we see all of our containers. So we have Nginx running, we have Wazoo, we have Kibana running, we have Elasticsearch running, we have our first Elasticsearch running, we have our second Elasticsearch running, and we have our third Elasticsearch running. We have, and then we have our Wazoo managers and our Wazoo worker running here. So that's looking good. And if we do a net stat, LTP and D, we see the box is listening on, on uh, the common ports that we would expect, right? So Wazoo Manager listens on 1514 for alerts and 1515 for registration. We have Nginx listening for browser for HTTPS connections on 443. So let's actually go ahead and log into this guy. If we do it, if config, I'll go ahead and grab the public IP address of this guy and I'll paste that there and let's go ahead and log into Kibana. So I'll go it because this is just a self-signed cert. My browser is complaining on, about it, saying it's not a trusted certificate. Right, so we can now log into Kibana. So I'll give the pass uh, the username as admin, and then password will be our please subscribe, which is what we uh, generated the hash for. And now look at this. I am now into our Wazoo stack. And we now have a full-fledged seam stack built within Docker. And it's as easy as that. And again, a huge thanks to our sponsor, Sock Fortress. They are a security operations center as a service company. So you guys go ahead and check them out if you are interested. And I think that wraps it up for today's video. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me and I will see you in the next one.